Tell me about it. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's a long time. Did you notice things change at all? Yeah, people I... say that. You know, you go with somebody, then you get married, and they say, "Gee, it's not the same person I married." And the biggest change I, for some reason now that we're married, um, during sex, my wife takes the phone off the hook, which you know never before when we were ma before we weren't married, she didn't do it. I don't know. Makes me nervous when I'm out of town, call home, get a busy signal. Uh, <laughs> never thought of that. That's that crazy. Oh. Huh? She's introduced me to a, a new concept in housekeeping called a hamper. Uh, I've been a bachelor too long. A hamper, you never. You know, when you're a bachelor, you just. Yeah, just throw it wherever you come in. Teaching, she's learning to cook too, which is good because uh, she used to make excuses. Now, now that she, now we're married, she has to cook. Like last time when she burned dinner, she'd say it's Cajun food. Uh, <laughs> I think she's getting recipes out of Soldier of Fortune magazine now. I don't know. And you're gonna have a baby out here. We're having a baby. Yeah. yeah she's, that's, uh, now that's exciting, isn't that's it? That's yeah. She's uh, she's four or five months along. Yeah. And uh, start taking a Lamaze class. Oh, you're one of those too. Yeah. It's it's a terrible class taught by an asthmatic. Uh, <laughs> really throws off our breathing here. <laughs> One second, I thought, what? Oh, yeah. That, that has got to disturb the breathing pattern. Right? Oh, yeah, it throws it way off. Well, for years, she's been saying, I want to hear the patter of little feet around the house. Yeah. Uh, I tried bringing home Emmanuel Lewis. I couldn't do it. <laughs> Birthday village was nothing, busy. Nothing worked. And, uh, she, but she's being real good about having a baby. She's not drinking coffee. Because they say, medical, AMA says now, if you drink too much coffee, there's a high risk that the child will look like Joe DiMaggio. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Look, we got, you, you do these wonderful little film pieces. You, you did one, one I loved on your dog. Oh, my dogs. These are uh, my two dogs. These are Vizslas. Ed, Ed knows. He gets to work with them. They're Vizslas. They're Hungarian dogs. And uh, they came over to this country in the 13th century with the Gabor sisters. <laughs> Send the mail directly to uh, Will. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. And I, I put together a film last time about my dogs driving my truck. I saw it. And uh, so I, I did it again. The dogs, I came home one day. The dogs are gone. The truck's gone. And my wallet's gone. So I got my camera and I went out looking for them. Okay. And this is the film of my dogs driving the truck. Little, little docudrama here. Petey quit smoking. Uh, I don't know. I get upset with these dogs all the time. But after they get the truck gas up. That'll be $20. Cash or credit card? Hey, that's my credit card. <laughs> I bet the guy overcharges them, too. Hey, where'd he learn my signature? <laughs> Thanks a lot. Come back. <laughs> That's a nice piece. They look like I was setters, but they're not. They're, they're I don't know that one. I'm not familiar with that breed of dog. They almost look like a, like a setter. They're in the family of a Weimaraner. They're, really, yeah. they're an old breed. They actually go back to the 13th century. Good-looking dogs. That's funny film. Yeah, that's fun. I, I can't wait to have the baby. I'll have the kid driving the car. <laughs> <laughs> Take a break. We'll be right back. Call for um, Coppola, Francis Ford Coppola. I just finished a movie called Peggy Sue Got Married with Kathleen Turner, Nicholas Cage. It'll be out in May. Hey, good for you. It's great. It was acting. It was fun for me. Yeah? Like, never fun. done a straight... Nah, well, this is my first big role in acting. Yeah. Really do, you remember, do you remember your father at all very well? Sure. Yeah, he was 16 when, when, I, when yeah. he passed away. I people was 16. don't know, his father was a, a very funny gentleman, Herb Schreiner. Uh, did wonderful radio shows. I still have tapes of his show at home. Yeah, the two uh, for the money, the game show? No, he was just doing a variety show at that time. Uh, and he'd do a monologue up front, and uh, it was wonderful stuff. Dry. 
kind of humor. And I just wonder if you're old enough to... And of course you are. Yeah, I so. have some of the kinescopes and things. I yeah. like watching them work. Thanks for being with us. Thanks, Come back man. soon. Uh, George, you are headed, uh, I suppose, backstage after the show. <laughs> My next guest, an old dear friend, is celebrating his 25th year at the Sahara Hotel, where he opens on January... <laughs> He opens there on January the 17th. Uh, if the creek doesn't rise, he'll be appearing at Harrah's in Reno. My, what a list of credits here. Beginning January 31st, he's got a video out. Not a workout tape or anything like that. A sweet title. It's called Buy This Tape, You Hockey Puck. <laughs> Would you welcome Mr. Warmth, Don Rickles. To the ranch. <laughs> they were wonderful. They Aren't really... they nice? Charming. Charming. Yeah, this is wonderful. This has to be rinsed. <laughs> <laughs> I got cow ticks. <laughs> what an evening, Mike. It's so it's good to see you. I didn't Mike know you were still on. Yo, yo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gee, I, I haven't been on in so long, you know, but I know how you sit with Fred and pick and choose and so forth. <laughs> Hi, Dad. Hi, Don. Anyway, uh, congratulations on the baby, really. <laughs> it's a wonderful household, these guys, really. The kids are happy, everybody's happy. No. <laughs> I understand the baby left. <laughs> uh, <laughs> baby watched dead by the bar and go, give me a triple. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wish you a lot of happiness. Thank, you, sir. Thank <laughs> you. How old now? <laughs> That's going to be great. That kid will be about 27, and you'll be in a home going, I love her. I certainly love her. And, uh, <laughs> and Victoria will be, let's go to Paris. Uh, anyway. <laughs> I haven't seen you for a long time. Yeah, well, get you. over it. <laughs> uh, it's not my choice. You always say now, I gotta, that. I got to talk about, I got to talk about something now. Okay. We've known each other a number of years, 25 years, right? Yeah, Maybe right. even more. Right. I saw you one night. You were out at La Scala restaurant not too long ago. And somebody says, there's Don Rickles over mm. there. And I said, where? I said, I don't know. No, right over there. I said, I don't see him. You had your back to me. Mm. I had not seen you since obviously you'd been frightened by a, by a ghost or something and the hair <laughs> had turned white. Mm. Mm. And you had your... I said, I, no, I said, where, where, where mm. are you talking about? And he says, no, the man with the, with the white hair. I said, mm. Rickles doesn't have white hair. Mm. What, what happened? Mm. None of your business. <laughs> no, uh... Actually, when, when my mother passed away, rest his soul, everybody said, his mother died, he got white hair. Ah, uh, then they said he has cancer and they're keeping it quiet, he has white hair. Then they said he has all kinds of problems, he has white hair. Mm -hmm. Then they said Barbara and I were separated, which is ridiculous, because with the money I owe her, there's no way. Yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, but actually, as we get older, you know, we're pretty much the same age. You're six months older, a year older than me. Yeah, I guess so. And the difference with you, you can see the highway. Uh, uh, no, no, he does. His face, you know, your face is starting, you're starting to show your age, you know. Well, I'm still young so. and wonderful. You still get out in the tennis court with the funny little tight little shorts and the leotard saying to your girlfriend, ah, Yes, sir. <laughs> what are you talking about? You got a face could hold a three-day rain. What are you talking about? <laughs> three-day rain. Three That's right. Rain. Oh, what are you okay. talking about? Gentile leading the Jew, three nothing That's going right. into the last. <laughs> I Did have you to punt on the 40. Oh, actually, you quit dying it, isn't that it? No, no, I don't Come on, you die it. You no, die you're, you're, dead. I you, never die it. Yours don't, went like don't that over... Don't steam me or the fat guy gets it. Over... <laughs> overnight, <laughs> overnight <laughs> that turn. He's a Marine, he's my friend, I wish him good things. You know, you get Ed steamed, he has one belt of beer, and he'll... Blah, and you find yourself pinned to the wall. Anyway, uh... That didn't win any place. It, of course you know, not. That didn't win any place. <laughs> that didn't win... I felt like a Yugoslavian and somebody didn't stamp my papers. Anyway, uh, look at the whole van. Hey, guys, the shipment came in. Hey, four hundred. No, 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 no. Anyway, uh, <laughs> no, that's a joke. That's a joke. No, the van is clean. That's it. Of course they're clean. Why, you do their laundry? Now, uh, the thing of it is, though, uh, John, we all get older and our hair gets gray. Oh, well, you never dyed yes. your hair since I've known no, you. No, I did. No, I did. Ed, you never dyed no, your hair. No. You should. Uh, I did it one time. 
Really? Why? I did when it started to turn gray. I thought maybe it would look better, and I started. Then I felt so ridiculous doing it. You know how I know that? On how the do you old know that? tapes. Uh, th don't, we're not, uh, I know what I said. Yes, right. Was this a playback? I know what I all said. Right. I hate that when it's like a quiz. Do you know what I did? I know what you did. I know what you did. We didn't have to keep okay, doing okay. that. How did you know? But from the comedy classics, which yes. are marvelous, by the way, Thank which you. I see on Channel 5 here locally. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> One guy in the balcony. I watch it. <laughs> anyway, uh, but uh, there it shows that you yes, try to dye I, your I hair. And it, it looks, you know, everything with moderation. And, you know, and when you age, your hair gets white. So that's, that's the that end is. of that. And you've aged, I've aged, and you've aged, dead, and you've aged. Certainly you've aged, but you don't want to accept it. Anyway, with that two-year-old running around, I says, where's my dada? Where's my dada? Where's my dada? <laughs> and dada's in the, in, in the bar going, I'll be with you in a minute, kid. <laughs> Speaking of time going by, I cannot believe you just celebrated your, uh, was it 20th wedding anniversary? 20th wedding that's anniversary. Nice. Bob and Ginny Newhart. Uh, Celebrated with, uh, please, you never saw my wife. Uh, no, that's a joke. That's a joke. That's a joke. She's a lovely Jewish woman, came from Philadelphia. I met her on the corner. A bus hit her about this far. Anyway, she just lays in the bed and goes, is that about it? Yeah. But, uh... Didn't you do something romantic? With my wife, you know, I, I got a great relationship. I love my wife dearly. I know you do. And uh, like the New Hearts, they're married 22 years. I was with them last night uh, at the uh, Scoffier Room. We went and had dinner to celebrate their anniversary. Your name was on the list to be invited, and then we thought about it. And, of course. Uh, since we knew you could get moody invited, and, sure. you know, and mm -hmm. be recognized and be a whole thing of da 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 Right. And who had seen it? We, we wanted to have you, Ed, yeah, you know. <laughs> but the keg of beer blew up, so we forgot about it. <laughs> but uh, we had a lovely time. And marriage is great if you don't... If you don't play act at it, you have to understand it. I, I'm advising you. Oh, look, sure. Look who I'm telling. <laughs> a man that knows all about it. The wives just line up. Yo, forget it. Yo, forget it. Yo, forget it. Hey, hey, hey. Go away. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> now, now you're talking. You it up. Now you're talking. You okay. should always live with a woman and forget about marriage. It's not your thing. You like a companion, which is lovely. I'm not saying that facetiously. I think it's lovely. I, I happen to get lucky. I married a value. But you, uh, but you didn't get married till you were um, 38 going in years a, old. Going well, in a I senility. used to hang around with you in Basin Street going, is the party over? Yes. Anyway. Nice yeah. number, Connie. Yes, mm. we used to. <laughs> we used to. <laughs> we used to. <laughs> we don't want to bring. Oh, no, let's don't somebody's bring taking my jewelry. Let's don't bring. Anyway, look at this. Jewish guy, and nobody touched me, and my jewelry's gone. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, no, I understand what you're saying. But I'm saying that we, we don't play act at it. It's a thing that, uh, it's companionship. Sure it is. And I must say, in 20 years that I've known this woman, sure, we have beefs, we get upset with each other, but basically, when it's all over, it's a 20-minute argument, and then it's That's gone. good. And I advise any young person that gets married, really, really work at it. If you work at it, it's delightful. Thank you, Dr. Brothers. <laughs> I'll live in <laughs> did, you buy, did you buy the new baby a gift yet? Yes, no I got the new baby. Barbara and I really thought about the gift, and you're going to love it, really. I really mean it. It's a picture of your game show. Uh, no, actually, it's... <laughs> what what it's, does that mean? I don't know, I but he so. doesn't know either, because he expects all kinds of things, really. Well, almost everyone has sent a gift. Yeah, well, <laughs> you got the message. Uh, <laughs> We have to, we have to take Here's your star search. <laughs> anyway, uh, star search this. Star search this. I right. gotta do. I gotta do a commercial. Do whatever you want. Of course, it's Just my relax. show. Just relax. Feel at home. With the money you have, you can spit on the camera. <laughs> we'll be back. <laughs> okay. It's very nice to be here. B is the operative word there. I love it. I love living in Los Angeles this time of year. It's the best. The weather. See, I'm originally from New Jersey, so what I do is every day I check the weather reports for back east. And as soon as a big snowstorm hits, I call home. <laughs> hey, Dad, how's it going? Yeah, I know what you mean. I had to close the windows here last night. <laughs> The only reason we have to worry about here are things like earthquakes. I always talk about them. Whenever any kind of tremor or earthquake hits this area, all my relatives from back east will call me. Like, my dad's usually the first one to break through. How you doing, boy? You all right? I'm like, what's he going to do if I answer the phone? Help! 
I'm trapped! <laughs> Hold on, boy, your mom's warming up the car. We should be there in five or six days. She doesn't want to stop one of those garage sales. I keep calling her. Earthquakes, arguments with my girlfriend. Look out, lane change comedically. Woo! <laughs> We're talking girlfriends now. My girlfriend. So I just try to do the little things to avoid the bigger arguments later. Like, I used to make this mistake all the time, just in terms of getting ready to go out for the date. When my girlfriend started to get ready to go out for the date, I started to get ready to go out for the date. Then I had an hour and a half ready time to kill. <laughs> Not her fault, it's my fault. Women generally take longer to get ready because they care about how they look. Guys tend to be very basic. Does this shirt go with these pants? <laughs> All right, let's go. <laughs> what do you mean? What? Stain, what stain? <laughs> How about now? <laughs> See, the problem is, and guys know this, once you're in your ready clothes, there's nothing else you can do. You can't work on a car, you can't roll around with a dog, you're in your ready clothes. All you can do is sit on the edge of the couch and yell, Let's go! <laughs> and there's never anything on television when you're ready to go out. This sucks. Let's go! And you think your yelling's gonna make her move faster back here. Let's go! Keep yelling, stress boy. <laughs> and the thing is, guys, when a woman, when she takes the time, when your woman takes the time to get ready to go out with you, to look good, to get dialed up to go out with you, you should say something. But you know how it is sometimes? It registers in your brain, she looks great tonight, but you don't say it. Then she brings it up in the car. Aren't you gonna say anything about how I look? <laughs> it's too late now, pal. <laughs> You might as well turn the car around, go home, and argue for a while. <laughs> Can you relate? <laughs> uh, so sometimes the pressure to get ready just overwhelms women. It's too much for them. Some of you guys must have been involved in this scene one time. You're waiting for her to get ready, and it's taken an unusually long amount of time this night. It's got real quiet back there. You haven't heard her move around for a while. You want to check to see how she's doing, but you don't want to look like you're pressuring her. So you kind of sneak back and peek into the bedroom, and you see her standing in front of an open closet full of clothes. <laughs> Options have overwhelmed her. She's gone into brain lock at this point. <laughs> her eyes are glazed over. The pupils are dilated. She's just kind of swaying in the breeze. <laughs> she's not saying anything, but you know what she's thinking. I'm fat, and there's nothing here that can help me. And the thing is, you gotta try to talk her down, guys. You gotta try to talk her down. No, baby, you're not fat. I love you. No, you're not fat. You look great. No, no, no. We'll pick out a dress together. You and I, we'll pick out one together. How about the blue dress? No! Forget the blue dress. I'll burn the blue dress. The blue dress is evil. We'll never see the blue dress again. Once you go in your slip, you look okay in your slip. I don't want to imply that women are the only ones who are insecure about how they look. They're just more upfront about it. They'll admit a woman will say she wants to lose weight to look better. Guys won't go on a diet unless there's a world issue involved. Ah, uh, no dessert for me. I, uh, I read an article in the paper, the earth is losing spin rotation, so uh, I'm gonna try to drop a couple of pounds, people will pick up some speed next year. Doing my thing for the planet, you know. But see, the pressure on, the, on a woman for weight is, is something we guys really can't, at a gut level, understand. You know, she tests you right from the beginning of your relationship, guys. Right from the beginning, she tests you about how you feel about her weight. The first time she sits on her lap, what's the first thing she says? Am I too heavy? <laughs> like you're gonna go, whoa! I hope I can save them! I can't feel my feet! <laughs> Right. Then idiot question number two. The first time you ask her how much she weighs, what does she come back with? Guess. <laughs> like you're gonna go, what, 210? <laughs> I said, they have, you have big shoulders, you might be able to hold a lot of weight there, huh? <laughs> no, any guy who's been around at all is gonna go, what are you, 70, 73 pounds there? <laughs> See, I just try to avoid doing the little things to cause the bigger arguments later. Like, you guys know not to do this, but sometimes you do it anyway out of instinct. 
Never ever watch another woman walk by when you're out with your woman. Now, I'm not saying that women never watch other guys walk by. They do. They're just better at it. They don't move their heads, just their eyes. See, I don't care how subtle the guy thinks he's being. His woman will sense the muscles in his neck start to tighten. He'll be watching that woman walk by, rotating his head. He'll get right about here, and he's face to face with his woman, and she's just laughing at him. Is that cute? Did you like that? Was that nice? Why don't you go ahead and get her? Bring her home. You can handle two women. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I, I was just, I was, I was just seeing. No, no, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I was just seeing what kind of dress she's wearing. I think you look better in that dress than she does. Maybe. Well, all right, all right. Maybe we should just go home and argue for a while. Okay, that was, uh, that was Rich Schreiner. Boy, the audience, you're great tonight for these people. We'll be right back. Stay where you are. We'll be your up now. Dennis Obama. Okay, now. Uh, Rita Rudner was scheduled to make her very first appearance on The Tonight Show last January the 20th. She got bumped. Uh, she has a role in her first feature film called The Wrong Guys, which comes out the 22nd of April. Would you welcome, please, Rita Rudner. Rita... Thank you. This is so exciting to finally be on the show because it, it happens, you know, and it is a little upsetting. Like last time, all my friends called me up the next day and said, we stayed up. <laughs> what was worse was my parents called me up and told me how wonderful I was. <laughs> I've been on TV for a while, though. Before I did comedy, I did commercials. I announced to the country that I had bad breath and... Dandruff problem perspiration. People would recognize me on the street. They'd try to hose me down. <laughs> and when I started, I was so classy. I started out, I was a ballerina. I was. I had to quit the ballet, though, after I injured a groin muscle. <laughs> it wasn't mine. I love being a comedian, except you do, you travel constantly. But my purse has been x-rayed in that little machine at the airport so many times, it has a lung now. <laughs> you know, one thing you should never do on a long trip? Start up a game of peekaboo with the child sitting in front of you. <laughs> there's, there's no ending to the game. He turned around, I finally just grabbed him by the bib. I said, look, it's always going to be me. hotels. I was in a Howard Johnson's once. You know, their slogan used to be, I'm not making it up, if it's not your mother, it must be Howard Johnson's. That was their slogan. I was staying there. I called down for room service about four in the afternoon. I was hungry. They said, no, it'll spoil your dinner. <laughs> maid came in every morning. She said, clean up your room. <laughs> As I was checking out, the lady behind the desk, the desk said, go ahead, leave, doesn't matter. I'll, I'll be dead in a couple weeks. <laughs> There's really only one way to describe my mother. There's a very old saying, I don't know if you've heard it, neurotics build castles in the air and psychotics live in them. <laughs> My mother cleans them. <laughs> I'm an only child, so I was very overprotected when I was growing up. Really, my tricycle had seven wheels. <laughs> and a driver. <laughs> my parents, they wouldn't even push me on the swing. They, they just sit me on the swing and run back and forth and say, it looks similar to this. <laughs> I always thought I was adopted when I was growing up, too, because I don't look anything like anyone in my family. Well, I look a little like my grandmother now because I have brown hair and blue eyes, and she has blue hair and brown eyes. <laughs> so my mother
father's mother, she's a very tough cookie. Really, she buried three husbands. Two of them were just napping. <laughs> married forever really they even have the same fingerprints now <laughs> they've passed their gold and silver anniversaries their next one coming up is rust <laughs> I think it's wonderful you know because marriages they don't last anymore really when I meet a guy sometimes the first question I ask myself is I don't know is this the man I want my children to spend their weekends with <laughs> parents do want me to get married badly. In fact, last time I went home, they threw me a surprise wedding. <laughs> and they don't care who anymore. As long as he doesn't have a pierced ear, that's all they care about. I think men who have a pierced ear are better prepared for marriage. Well, they've experienced pain and bought jewelry. <laughs> I don't talk about sex too much on stage because my parents are watching this and I don't think that they know that I know. And, um, we've never had the discussion once I asked my dad the facts of life. He said, if you don't pay your mortgage, the bank forecloses on the house. <laughs> I did read that men reach their sexual peak at 18 and women reach their sexual peak at 35. Do you get the feeling God is into practical jokes? <laughs> We're reaching our sexual peak right around the same time they're discovering they have a favorite chair. <laughs> Most men don't want to get involved nowadays. In fact, I dated my last boyfriend for about two years and finally I just gave him an ultimatum. I said, listen, either you tell me your name or it's over. <laughs> playing tennis he couldn't even say 30 love <laughs> kept saying 30 I really like you but I still have to see other people <laughs> so many men are like that in fact you know how I end relationships now I don't say this isn't working out or I don't want to see you anymore if I never want to see a man again I just say you know I love you <laughs> I want to marry you I want to have your children. Sometimes they leave skid marks. <laughs> Thank you very much. We'll be back in a moment. I think all of these young performers and I should be very happy that they got this kind of an audience. Yeah. Because this is already... Thank you. Okay, here's... Uh... Here's a young man who's making his first appearance on The Tonight Show, although he sat in the green room twice before and got bumped. Uh, Daryl's going to be at the Comedy Store at the Dunes Hotel in Las Vegas from the 29th of March to April 4th. And then he's going to be in the island of Maui at a place called Yuck Yucks. I love that. May 16th to the 25th. Would you welcome Daryl Savad. Daryl. So uh, now you guys know what Webster's gonna look like when he grows up. <laughs> How old is Webster now? About 33, 34 years old? I think he's too old for that show, really. I think that's such a strange name, too, Webster. You know, it's like, black names are always bizarre. Not like other names you find. Black names sound more like products you'd find in the drugstore. Like pharmaceutical families, you know? Come on in, meet the family. My name is Advil. It's my wife, Clorette, over here. Uh, Tylenol, you want to turn the TV down? You're giving me a headache. It's my oldest daughter, Banaka. And the twins, Mirin and Visine. Thank you. I don't know. I named my son Oxy-5. I had to. No, I got kids. I'm not a typical kind of dad, though. My kids have a bad habit. They stay up on the weekends, and they watch movies about monsters and maniacs and demons. Then they come in my bedroom and ask if they can sleep with me. <laughs> like a monster's gonna come in the bedroom, kick the door down, I'm gonna stay and protect him. <laughs> I'd be gone. <laughs> I would.
it. I see it this way. I'm a fairly young man. I can always have more kids. <laughs> I'm out of there. I don't know, I tell them not to watch these movies, you know. I went away recently, I don't watch those kind of movies. I love TV game shows, that's my thing. I went away to Africa, I went to Jamaica, there were no TV game shows. You know, and it makes sense, a starving country, you wouldn't expect to see some guy coming on TV going, hello Africa, <laughs> and welcome to the 25 cent rectangle. <laughs> when well, last week on our show, Mr. Hobney Bugabe won a stick. Kicked by Roy Hill. I don't know. Americans are so strange. We spend thousands and thousands of dollars going to other countries to visit ruins. You know, the ghettos of Italy, the pyramids, the Stonehenge, ruins. Foreigners don't come over here and go, excuse me, but uh, which way is Cleveland? <laughs> now, Ruby, can you get a picture of me in front of this low-income housing project? <laughs> Cleveland didn't like that, okay. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I can say my relationship's working out. My wife's great. She's great. It's working out because I'm sensitive. I think all men should be sensitive. Yeah, yeah. Learn to cry. Crying is the key. I think all men should cry. I do it once a month just to get even with her. I do, she, she comes home. I'm in the kitchen. My arms folded. I cry and I listen to Barry Manilow records. When she walks up and asks me what's wrong, I look at her and go, nothing. <laughs> You're a woman and you wouldn't understand. <laughs> but I'll try, I'll try and tell you, I'll try and be sensitive. <sighs> it was a fourth down, the Raiders had the ball. Recently got back from Michigan, I had a chance to visit my uncle. My uncle's getting fat and lazy now. He's 80 years old, he's at that point of his life where he just sits in front of the TV with a remote control in his hand. He's looking at my aunt going, Bertha, Bertha, come here and push the button. His waistline is taking over his whole body. His waistline's right here now. I'm sure next time I see him, he'll be a pair of pants walking around the house. <laughs> Got to pull his zipper down to watch the news on TV. Right? <laughs> My aunt buys his underwear, of course, and that's great, you know, because women know the secret. They know a guy would just never get new underwear, especially single guys. Single guy wears his underwear forever. <laughs> Holes in them, the elastic's worn out. I had a pair at home that was just the elastic band. I was jogging in the park, pull it up on my head like a sweatband. <laughs> oh. So I just got back from Vegas. I had a chance to open for a couple of blues singers there, and that was great. I don't like the blues because it's depressing music. That's why you never hear blues Christmas carols. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Some guy in front of your TV, like on your TV, going... I like to do a, a Christmas song for you. It's a song of love, a song of joy, a song of happiness. I call it, My Woman is Dead. I woke up Christmas morning. My woman was dead. Reindeer came down the chimney and stepped on her head. <laughs> no, no, my favorite blues singer was Otis Redding. The guy was brilliant. He wrote songs about absolutely nothing and he still turned out gold records. Doc of the Bay's biggest song is a song about nothing, just sitting in the morning sun. I be sitting when the evening comes, watching the ships roll in. Then I watch them roll away again.
Sounds like a busy day to me. He could have stayed at home and wrote that, you know? Sitting at home in a chair. Then I get up and I walk over there. Then I come back and sit down. And I turn my head and I look around. You've been great, thanks. together what would happen if they run long i'm the only man in history to be bumped from the bump show here it is <laughs> bump from the bump show Hard anyway you save the film because you you do this thing called fred rogan's tv's hall of shame which is a dynamite show. thank you thank you very much dynamite funny stuff and um what do you think of the Olympics? Well, I'll tell you, I think we're going to do a lot better during the Seoul Olympics in the, uh, in the summer games. Yeah. Because NBC will have the games, and of course, we'll do it right. That's the key. <laughs> we will do it right. And, uh, we haven't done too well up there, have we? No, we really haven't. But you know, the big story is Eddie the Eagle Edwards, the British... We're trying to get him. Expert. We're trying to book him. Tomorrow He's, night. Yeah, we got him on tomorrow night. He had, I think, the quote of the year. After he came down the 90-meter ski jump, they said, how did you feel? What were you experiencing when you were up there? He said... My bum was screwed like a prune. Eddie. <laughs> six to eight, six, ten, seven yeah. feet. There was one exception. Spud Webb yeah. was on the show. I think it's about five, seven. And uh, we have another player here tonight in the NBA that's actually even shorter than Spud Webb. Oh. And we've asked him to come to the show tonight to talk to him and see the kind of problems that a short basketball player has to contend with. So here from the Los Angeles Lakers is our outstanding forward, Dunk Dorf. Welcome, uh, welcome to the show, Dunk. Thank you very much. Good to see you there, boy. I think the question that must be on everybody's mind is certainly on mine. How did you ever select basketball as a as a profession? Well, Johnny, I actually didn't start as a basketball player. <clears throat> well, basically, I was a cheerleader for the Lakers. I didn't know that. That's right. That's probably uh, most famous for starting that cheer, swing him to the left, swing him to the right, sit down, stand up, fight, fight, fight. You probably remember that one. I don't remember seeing that at all. Don't remember that at the game? You said, well, it used to go like this. You swing him to the left, swing him to the right, sit down, stand up, fight, fight, fight. Swing him to the left. Lakers, right? Oh, yeah. Lakers. Yeah, I okay. also started the actual, the Lakers spell out the letter thing. That was the old chant, the locomotive used to give it that one. You remember that one? That was a, give me an L. Give me an A. Give me a K. Give me an E. Give me an R. Well, I, give me an S. Okay. Hey, 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 Lakers. Okay, I, that was good stuff. Okay, I do remember that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> now, Doug, yeah, I remember that. Now, Doug, right. I... I noticed a red where you scored about 20 points a game. That's now, right. That, that's that's right. How, how can you possibly score 20 points a game? Basically, most of my points are scored from the foul line. Uh, John, what I do is I wait until the other team gets the ball. Right. Then I just run down to the other end. <laughs> then I set up my position like this. Right. And then uh, they just run into me, bang, like this. <laughs> and then I pretty much... Um, <laughs> well, you... Now, well, that's, that's intriguing, right. but do you ever actually get to handle the ball during the game? I do. Once in a while, they'll get it to me. I'm pretty doggone the good, the ball handler, you know, I'm short, but once they get it to me, I got it. That's amazing, amazing. Thank you very much. Well, I guess... <laughs> I would imagine, I guess at your height, you actually, you actually see a different game than the other players. Johnny, at my height, I not only see a different game, I smell a different game. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 I, don't, I don't understand what you mean. Well, I'm dealing uh, mostly in shoes and socks. Oh, yeah, there. I see what I mean. See, so, uh, beginning of the season, it's not too bad, but as that season goes on, we're talking a waffle, you know <laughs> By the time I get to the finals, I could take the enamel right, right off, off your, your breath. Huh? I like that. Right, sir. Now, here's something I really don't understand at all. I understand, uh, Dunk, that you can actually slam dunk a basketball. That's right. That's How right, can that huh? humanly be possible? Well, I have a little assistance that I have to... If you just sure. hold on to that, you sure. I got... 
Uh, this is a little special piece of equipment that they allow me to use in the NBA, you see. I didn't know. What I do is carry this little box out with me to the thing, and I just try to get up on the tear like that. <laughs> kind of balance like that. And then um, so I can maneuver it pretty good around the course like that. And I can uh, guard it as they come down the old appeal like that. They let you do it. Now let me do that. Try. Yeah. Then once I get down here, I set myself up. Right. And if you just catch sure. me that ball, sure. and then I just give it like that. Yeah. 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 That's absolutely amazing. All right. Doug, I thank you for being here and give me a high five. Can you give me a high five? I can't give you a high, I can give you a low one, my best. <laughs> Doug Dork, ladies and gentlemen. Changing brown eyes to blue. My uh, good friend Tim Conway, who you just met, as his alter ego has a video cassette. It's going to be available <laughs> in May. So look at look at look the cover. Can you see this? It's a spoof about golf lesson called Dorf Dorf on Golf. <laughs> Which you welcome, Tim Conway. Well, wise guy, you said do a basketball player, remember? We were right. at uh, Harvey's birthday party, and uh, you're the one who said that I think this will work, so it's all your fault. Well, you came on <laughs> here one night, you did a weightlifter mm -hmm. as Mr. Dorf. Right. And then you did a jockey. Right. Uh, an elf. An elf. This has become my life. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and we were at Harvey Corman's birthday party, and I said, you know, I think it might be funny if you come in and play... A basketball, a basketball player. player in the NBA. Well, see how wrong you were. Well, I, I thought it was good. What do you know about comedy? I thought, no, I it was great. Yeah, thank funny. you very much. See, well, uh, boy, golly. I'll come up with these things. Well, yeah, hang around. How'd you come up with a character? Now, you know, I never saw you do this character on the Carol Burnett show. Uh, no, that's true. Um, I, I guess I had a show of my own, and Harvey uh, did it one with me one time when, when it was a takeoff on Fantasy Island, and I was, uh, boss, the plane! And uh, <laughs> from that, uh, then this golf thing that we did, uh, I went out and buried myself all over a golf course, which was a lot of fun. Uh, actually, the tractors were running over me and everything. It was a wonderful time. But you actually had to go out and dig little... Yeah, dig little holes. Now, the golf course did not know that. See. <laughs> <laughs> we just said, we're coming out to shoot a little thing, and then we That's dug uh, holes in the golf. They're still out there on the green going, boy, I don't know. <laughs> it's a funny character. Thank you. It's Thank funny. You. Thank you. Well, thank you for allowing me to do it. You're a wonderful person, and don't let anybody tell you. <laughs> As you mentioned, last time we saw each other it was at uh, Harvey Corman's birthday party. I guess he was 60 years old. It was uh, announced very, publicly. Very traumatic. So weekend, yeah. Traumatic for him. Yeah, and you've known uh, him for a long time, longer than I have. Right, and it was a beautiful party. As you know, uh, all his friends were there. Which were 11, wasn't it, that we had <laughs> actually counted? No, he, he invited... A lot of relatives. Yeah, lot of relatives. I, I guess a friend a year or something like that. So there were, uh, yeah, a lot of relatives, as I recall. Uh, 60 people there, and it was, a, it was a marvelous party. He spent a lot of money on it. Uh, I was really surprised to know that Sears made wine. But I feel... <laughs> <laughs> uh, Any... <clears throat> Let me get one that has a twist top on it. I yeah, would, you, you know, know that, and the date on it was Tuesday, which I thought was, at least it was fresh. You know, that's important. Are, yeah. you, saying, are you saying here publicly that Harvey is penurious? Uh, not only that, but he's cheap. Cheap, cheap, <laughs> cheap. Parsimonious, yeah. too. Yeah, we did a, co a commercial in New York, so we went in together, and that was a time that the uh, air fair were at war and everything, so he said, I think we should take, uh, you know, get on a cheaper flight to go in, and I said, you know, let's go on a real American Airlines or something. And uh, he said no, that he felt that we could... Uh, so we went uh, Econo Line. Uh, Econo Line? We flew from Los Angeles to New York nonstop for $3, which <laughs> was amazing. Uh, they gave you, uh, when you went there, you got a uh, boarding pass and a folding chair, which is, you know, you just, <laughs> wherever you uh, want to sit on the plane. Uh, there was no entertainment on the plane. There was a high school play, though there was, was very much. Nice. And... Uh, we taxied from Los Angeles to Dallas. To Dallas. <laughs> Econo line. Econo line. I think when you see a pilot in the cockpit going, gah, gah, get out. <laughs> You've got problems up front, there's no question. And uh, I noticed a lot of things on the plane. You know, when they give you the instructions on the plane yeah. that uh, if... Uh, <laughs> 
if the oxygen in the cabin happens to decrease, that you do, you breathe normally, uh, put the thing over your face and ma uh, mouth, continue and, breathing and just continue breathing normally. Now, can you imagine, and you go, well, we're dropping about 10,000 feet a second here. <laughs> I better breathe normally. Yeah, I, uh, we're going to hit that mountain soon, I would imagine. And, uh... <laughs> Honey, did you lock that door before we left? <laughs> um, so we had a delightful flight. The yeah. Econo line, huh? Yeah, very nice, very nice line. Is that about wrap up the material on a Econo No, line? that'll, I got a little more. But, uh... <laughs> I didn't get any green beer. I don't fool around. Yeah, I know. Boy, this is good stuff. Can so I, tell, me oh, what you, tell me what you think of this, really. I don't know. We're not plugging Which one any... is yours and which one is this? We're not doesn't make any difference. Ed, you okay? Right, I mean, you're sure. all right. I We're know, not, you know what I mean? <laughs> We're not plugging any brand. No, I understand. It's not a beer plug. This it horse is great. never going to race again. I don't care what you say. <laughs> <laughs> you had to get it in. Yes. Oh, yeah. Well, your sure. blood sugar is way down. Here. down here. That's right. You got to score when you can. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that bad? Uh, that... <laughs> No, you know that. Well, first of all, it tastes just like beer, but it tastes well, it pretty is, good, really. doesn't it? Yeah, very, good. very nice. Yeah. I guess food coloring is uh, more or less tasteless. I would right. imagine so. I would certainly hope so. What else is new in your life? Anything happening? Oh, uh, that's it. I'll tell you. How are your folks? No, we talked about your folks. They're not from show business at all. Uh, no. Uh, my father was, uh, my, well, my dad was Irish, so, uh, right. you know, yes. Good day so, for you. Uh, he's up there somewhere. Uh, <clears throat> actually, he's on the second floor of NBC. I mean, he's not, you know. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> It's not like he's gone altogether, you know. No, he is. And uh, he's probably up there with uh, an Irish harp or something uh, this very day. So he is from Ireland, so he's a true Irish guy. Uh, my mother is from Romania. No, I you know, every time that. I say that, now notice the applause that comes. My mother says... Everybody just kind of... Yeah. Well, you know why? They're waiting for a joke. Oh, really? You said my room is from Romania. Romania is a joke, I think, Google. perhaps. Uh, no, my mother says, always, why don't you mention that you're from Romania? And look at I said Romanian. Uh, mm. Oh! It's a fine country. Yes, it is. Did you ever, did you ever go back and, and look into your genealogy? Do you ever have any interest doing that? Uh, no. Um, oh, okay. I have no relatives, which is great, outside what do you of... mean you have uh, no relatives? Well, I have no relatives. I have a mother, and that's it. I mean, I, I had a mother and a father, but I mean, uh, and now all I have is a mother. Well, how about aunts? No, I have no aunts. No aunts, uncles? Good. Oh, I have, a, I have an aunt, yeah, over in Romania, yeah, which I've never seen. Well, why don't, you, why don't you go see her? I suppose I should, yeah. And who? Do you know her name? I don't know. I don't. Uh, what time is it? I could get over there. Yeah, but that's the only relative. And who? Do you know? I don't even know. Aunt uh, Sturgatsky, BK Proponto, or something. I have no idea. Uh, never well, met that's her. That's kind of sad. I'm sorry. Isn't to hear it, though? That. Yeah. No relatives. Well? Cousins? No, well, I was. I am an only child, and, w and this is the truth. When I call my mother, I say, hello, mom, and she says, who is this? Now, wouldn't you think <laughs> she could narrow it down? Being an only, only child, that she could narrow it down to me. Yeah. Did you um, miss brothers and sisters growing up? I don't want to get too heavy here, but... I don't we think so, funny because stuff I never way, had so them. Really... Yeah, yeah, I, um, I rented a couple, but uh, <laughs> basically they were uh, uh, very nice. So on the Sakana line... We, they, are, uh, no, <laughs> they always say it, it's, uh, it's lonely to be an only child. I'm just, but you probably didn't notice the difference, right? No, it was lonely being a, an only child. I can say that honestly. Yeah, but, well, my parents would move, you know, without telling me, of course. Of course. And then, <laughs> so you come home and go, I wonder where they are today. Um, they gave me everything, though, which yeah. was, uh, now that I look back, nothing. Uh, but <laughs> at the time, it seemed like a lot to them. Yeah. You know, but... Uh, they, um, well, we got to get you some relatives. That's it. We should, we we should, should rent a relative or something. I wonder if there's a there place... There are Kelly you... girls. There's a rent-a-car. Rent a relative. Why don't we just get a Kelly girl for me instead of a relative? <laughs> yeah. That would be good. Yeah. <laughs> I never thought... Of... I don't have anybody to write to and uh, on uh, St. Uh, Cousin's Day, I don't have anything, oh. or St. Aunt's Day, or St. Uh, Brother's Day, or anything. I'm, I'm very, I am very lonely. Ed. <laughs> Jeremy, what occurred to me today? I don't think there is a saint named Al. I don't know why that occurred to me. Just there's a Saint Christopher, Saint Joseph. Do you know that there is a Saint Copa Cabana? That's the truth. And I forgot what he is a saint of, but there is a Saint Copa Cabana because we were playing the other night a game, know. and there was a Saint Copa Cabana. Maybe he's the uh, Saint of Maracas or Did something. You know? but, uh, no, no, I no there is no. a Saint Copa. Well, you know all about that I stuff. You've religion. Did you go? Do you still go to confession and things like that? Are you still? Well, there's the not a side? priest alive that has that kind of time. I know. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking That's about, true. yeah, you're talking about major telecons. <laughs> you know, Priest brings his lunch into the confessional. That's right. It's going to be yeah. a long day here. <laughs> uh, we'll take a break. We're coming right back. Harry Anderson's little Diane's here.
And they have relatives. And it's going to be seen tomorrow night and thereafter every Wednesday at 9 o'clock. And uh, Harry is also one of the best, he started actually as a street performer, one of the best comedy magicians around. And he's going to be at the Arlington Theater in Santa Barbara the 28th of March. Would you welcome Harry Anderson? <laughs> I got one. You got one, huh? Little here's, green beer? Here's to you. Here's toward you. I hadn't have met you. Wouldn't have annoyed you. <laughs> How you doing? Oh, that was good. Good to see you. Good to see you. We'll, we'll talk about this stuff in a minute. People are yeah. wondering about this. We know what it is, but... Anyway, are you any Irish, Anderson? And no, Swedish, I'm, Swedish, I'm Swedish. Yeah, yeah we, uh... Yeah, well. We raped Scotland. I think we couldn't find Ireland. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you speak any Swedish? You no, You more to dog. Huh? You morty dog. I think that means how are you? My new that's why I I know that. My hat has three corners. I don't know why I know that. <laughs> Is that easy to work into a conversation? Uh, well, I just did. Yeah, you did, of course. <laughs> how you been? Now, what are we what are we gonna talk about here? I know what I know what this stuff is. I mentioned you were a street performer. Yeah. Um uh, most people probably knew that who saw you in the early days of television because you did a lot of uh, stand up and uh, the scam flim flam stuff on stage. I saw you a lot at the comedy improv doing some wonderful stuff with the the nail through the, the old needle through the, the arm. needle through yeah. the arm, and people At would the dinner show. People yeah. would scream, actually scream. Geek you, magic. What? Geek, well, last time <laughs> I was on, magic. last time I was on, we talked about how much fun it was as kids ordering yeah. from magic catalogs, and you mentioned Abbott's Magic Company of Colon, Michigan. That's, That's right. really a place. It's <laughs> a bigger place than I thought. So I brought you. <laughs> I brought you uh, Abbott's Catalog Number 6 well. from Abbott's Magic Novelty Company. This is for bedside reading, but before I give it to you, I was reading it, and I found... This has all the great magic in the world. I mean, all of it. For those of you who have never done magic, this was like a Bible for oh. kids, kids growing up. If we didn't have that, it was the National Magic Company or Abbott Magic or Chicago Magic. Right, right. And, uh... But Abbott's at the time, when I was a kid, was the big one. Mm -hmm. And I mean, this, is, this one is from 1940. You can buy Cutting a Lady in Half for $85. <laughs> lady not included. But you can also, yeah. yeah, but you can also buy Pickled, just right for all occasions, close-up, platform, or stage. Magician uses borrowed handkerchiefs from the spectators. He displays a banana and covers it with one handkerchief. The magician then displays a large cucumber pickle. He covers this with a second handkerchief. Nothing could be fairer. And to the audience, there is no doubt in their minds as to which hank covers the pickle and which covers the banana. And yet, at the magician's command, the pickle changes to the banana and the banana changes to the pickle. It mystifies, it entertains, and it comes complete with pickle and banana and special patter, price, we pay the postage, one dollar. One buck. I believe that. Just for you. Well, thanks, that's for you, you know? And then I got something else, because we talked about how... Did you remember? I remember so much sending away for stuff like this. I would go out and, and earn a dollar a quarter or an allowance, take it, sit down, and write a letter, trying to pretend I was older. Oh, yeah. You know, but like I was a magician. And my sister, Catherine, would type the letter. I'd say, dear son, I was like 13. Please send me... I, I don't think I fooled them, because I would send them a dollar and a quarter, saying, please send me one silk, you know, so forth, yours truly. The great Carsoni. <laughs> and my sister for that and, and go out to the mailbox and set up a tent and wait for the mailman to come. There's something like oh, mailing, yeah. getting something mail order was fantastic. Okay, well, this was the other thing. This now, is, is this? we talked about how you would send away for something and, and, you'd, and it would say, uh, no rehearsal necessary, <laughs> Self works itself, mm -hmm. and you'd get something that, that you couldn't do if you were 105. Well, when I was a kid, I saw these again, so I picked them up. When I was a kid, in the spook magic section, mm -hmm. They had terrorize, terror eyes, terrorize with terror eyes. This uh -huh. is Halloween magic. You were going to scare your friends, and for a buck, this, you want to try these on? That's what you these got. These are probably coming around again, aren't they, for one dollar? And you'd put these on. Mm -hmm. That's, That's pretty spooky, huh? That's what you would get. I can't see what it, I can't see what I can't see what you it look looks good. like. You look good. You look. Thank you. Yeah. That's so real there you buck, go. Huh? Those are memories. For you. Is that what you started as? I mean, doing the the magic, and then it went into the comedy. Well, I started magic, and then I got out on the street and realized that I could make more money hustling with the shell game. Right. And so I hustled till I got my jaw broken, and then I 
sat around with my mouth wired shut for six weeks and figured out maybe linking rings were safer. Right. And went back to the magic, and on the street, comedy was a great tool. It you did the three shell game, three card Monty, and all those kind of... The shell game. Yeah. I didn't learn the Monty really till later, but right. I didn't. I was a pretty good shell worker in my day. And you actually did that on the streets? Sure did. Spent three days in the drunk tank in New Orleans once during Mardi Gras for doing it. No that. kidding. Yeah. Yeah, you brought no, what day. we call the jumbo cards also. Jumbo cards? Yeah. Oh, I brought a trick. Yeah, you want to yeah. see a trick? Sure. Okay. Well, these are... Sure, you don't play solitaire in a phone booth with these, but... <laughs> Remember yeah. my first, I remember the first deck that I thought that was dynamite. Yeah, well, this is, this is a trick I learned as a kid. The cards weren't this big, but I want you to remember it as I remember it. Okay. So brought... This is a memory trick. This memory is where trick. I memorize a deck of cards, even though I shuffled them just before I came out because I knew we might not have time for me to shuffle them out here. So I... <laughs> I will memorize these cards, the order of the cards. Just speak amongst yourselves for a moment here. I uh, got them. All right, okay. now. You will name any card, and I will remember where that card was, and I will find it, because I memorize them even though I shuffle them back straight. In other words, whatever I say, <clears throat> you will know where it is without even looking at it. Yeah, but if you say everything I say, then it takes twice as long to finish the trick. <laughs> Certainly. <laughs> it's true. You bought true. the pattern book, it's huh? True. <laughs> All right. And complete with pattern and banana. Pattern and, and jokes, pickle. okay. How about the four of hearts? Four of hearts, no problem. Four of hearts, four of hearts. Four of hearts. Hold on, hold on. It's coming back to me. It's coming back to me. It's well, coming wait back. A oh, ho, ho, ho. I have found it. Have I found it? Have I found it? The four of hearts. Oh, yeah, but wait a minute. Wait. The four of hearts. Man from audience. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're simply reading that off of the back of the, the cards. The cards are marked. Of course. Yes, but it's so subtle that you might not know. <laughs> Now, if you'd known when I came out that I was working with a Mark Dax, see, psychologically, it would have been a whole different situation. Well, was I snuck with it. Like a ton of books. I tell you, was I snuck with it. Okay, anyway, thanks. That's, that's, that's fun. It brings back a lot of fond memories. You're now directing Night Court. I did one. Did some yeah. writing and, and, and directing. You like I, that? I wrote one and directed it. You like that? Uh, yeah, it was like my daughter said after... Some of oh, after a roller coaster ride, she said that was a lot of fun. Let's never do it again. <laughs> the writing was fun because I got to do that at yeah. home in my underwear. Yeah. But um, the, the directing, when you're performing, is a is a lot of work and it's a very pressure filled you got a, thing. You're I don't know how your brother does it. You're responsible for everybody. Yeah. We got a film clip. Is this one of the shows you've done, or is this one just a sequel? A show uh, this coming is up? this is I think something that's. Uh, already been on. It's a cold opening to the show, and it's just the regular guy, so I don't think it needs an intro. Okay, watch the monitor here. Yeah, sir, you want to join us for a little pre-trial snack? No, you guys go without me. <laughs> I still got a few delicates I got to ring out before court. All right, sir, what happened? Well, all my clothes and most of my possessions got drenched by the water. The water which came from... The big hoses. <laughs> Did I mention the fire? No. no. There was a fire in my apartment building last night. Not much was burned, but the smoke and water damage will take a couple of days to clean up. Everything I own was soaked. So then, under your robe, you're... Cool and breezy, yes, ma'am. <laughs> 